In this video, we're going to be taking a look on pages PowerPoint 52 and 53, in which we're going to insert and style a picture. After watching this video, you should be able to insert and format a picture, and resize and move a picture. In PowerPoint, a picture is defined as a digital photograph, a piece of line art or clip art or other artwork that is created in another program. PowerPoint gives you the ability to insert 14 different types of pictures, including the JPEG file interchange format and BMP Windows bitmap files into a PowerPoint presentation. As with all objects in PowerPoint, you can format and style inserted pictures to help them fit the theme of your presentation. You can also hide a portion of the picture you don't want to uh, be seen by cropping it which means that you cut out part of the picture. The crop portion of a picture is still available to you if you ever want to show that part of the picture again. To reduce the size of the file, you can permanently delete the crop portion by applying a picture compression setting in the Compressed Pictures dialog box. If we now take a look on step one on page PowerPoint 52, it tells us that we want to scroll down now in the thumbnails uh, pane until we reach slide nine. And here we are at slide nine. And then it tells us that we want to click the thumbnail and that's going to select the slide nine thumbnail. And then we want to click the pictures icon in the content placeholder on the slide. And of course, these are the content placeholders. Of course, notice that we have insert table, insert chart, insert a smart art graphic. There's our pictures that we're going to click on. We also have online pictures as well as insert video. But we're going to click on this pictures here. Now, when we do this, the insert pictures dialog box will open up and displays the pictures available in the default primary um, pictures library, which is probably uh, in your uh, my doc, uh, typically it would be formally in the My Documents on there. Of course, now you can also insert a picture by clicking the Pictures button on the, ins, uh, on the Images group on the Insert tab. Now on step two, it tells you that you want to navigate to the location where you store your data files. So in this case, once again, I saved mine onto my desktop. Now this is where you either want to go to your downloads or to your home directory uh, or your home drive or to your uh, My Documents. But I did save mine onto the desktop. And we want to go and find the file that is uh, named pptc3.jpg, and that is a JPEG file, is uh, how we uh, pronounce that. So I'm going to scroll down here, and then there it is, the pptc3 JPEG image. So when I click on that, that selects it, and then I'm going to click on Insert. Now, we will notice that the picture fills the content placeholder on the slide. And then now we have a new tab, which is the Picture Tools Format tab, opens up on the ribbon. Now, the picture would look better if we crop some of the image. So we're going to take out some of this image that's on here. And to do this, we'll move down to slide three. Or step three, excuse me. On step three, it tells us that we want to click the Crop button in the Size group. So we go over here to the size group and we're going to click on the crop button here. And when we click on the top part of the crop button, there's once again this is a two part crop button, we want to click on the top part of the crop button. When we click on that top part of the crop button, we notice that our picture has these little black lines around it now. We have uh, the black lines in the corner and also on the edges where the sizing handles are at. When we do this, we want to place the pointer over the lower right corner of the picture, which is right over here. And of course, we'll notice that the pointer changes into uh, a, uh, looks like a partial a frame that's on there, but it kind of looks like that lower right hand corner uh, that's on there as well. Now, when the crop button is active, cropping handles appear next to the sizing handles on the selected object. So when, we, when our mouse pointer changes to this, we're ready to crop. Now, of course, a quick tip as well, we can click the crop button list arrow to take advantage of other crop options, which includes cropping to a shape from the shapes gallery and cropping to a common photo size or aspect ratio. In step four, it tells us that we want to drag the corner of the picture up and to the left 
so that it appears as it is shown in figure C-3. And then we're going to release our mouse button and then press the escape key. So we're going to click on this right here and we're going to drag it up and to the left. And we're going to take it just so that we're in between uh, these two branches right here and right above this rock that's right here. So you want it to look roughly about right here. When you do this, you can release your mouse button and then press your escape key. Now PowerPoint has a number of picture formatting options uh, that's on there and we're going to, to experiment with some of these. So that when we release our mouse button, this shows us the image still a little bit uh, that was there and when we press the escape key that removes the remaining part of the image that we no longer wish to see. In step five, it tells us that we're now going to click the More button in the Picture Styles group. And of course, our Picture Styles is right up here in the center of the ribbon. And our More button is right here. And of course, notice that we have some of these different Picture Styles. It tells us here to move our mouse pointer over the Style thumbnail. So we can click on the different styles here, and of course we notice how our image is changing. And of course we want to go with a one that is going to be suitable for our presentation. So it tells us that ultimately that we are going to click on the rotated white. And of course this is going to be in the third row that's on here. And of course here's the reflected perspective right. And then there's the bevel perspective left uh, white. And there we keep on looking on this. And of course we're ultimately going to get down to our third row that's on here. And we do want to choose the uh, rotated white. And it's actually in the second row. And we are at the one, two, three, four, five, six column. So it's the second row, six column. It is the rotated white. Uh, the textbook did say it was in the third row, but actually in this case it's going to be uh, in the uh, second row in the sixth column. And this is the one that we want to choose right here. And when we click on this, we now have a picture that has a white frame and it's slightly uh, rotated uh, on there to the left. And of course we see that where our picture was at, there's our kind of outline of the frame, and then of course how it looks now. In step six, it tells us that we want to click the corrections button in the adjust group. So over here on the left hand side, we have the adjust group. And then the one with the sun on here, this is the corrections button. When we click on this, of course we have some different corrections that we can add to this. And it tells us that we want to move our pointer over the thumbnails to see how the picture changes. So we can either sharpen or soften the picture, or we can change, we'll take a look at the brightness and contrast so we can see how that goes through there. See, you know, if we want to make this a little bit brighter, uh, change the uh, you know, contrast to it as well. And ultimately it tells us that we want to change the sharpness to this, so that we want to go up to this top row. And it tells us that we want to sharpen this, we want to click on the Sharpen 50%. And when we click on this, we notice that the picture clarity is a little bit better that's on there, so it's a little bit of a sharper image for us. Then next, in step 7, it tells us that we want to click on the Artistic Effects button. Uh, on there and that's in the adjust group and of course the adjust group was the one group that we were still in and it's two buttons to the right from the corrections button that we were just using and here's the artistic effects when we click on that notice that we have some different effects we can move our mouse pointer over again to see the live preview uh, we can move that over the thumbnails and we can take a look and see uh, the different types of effects that are there Now, a lot of these are very interesting um, that's on there, and we can take a look and see how they would uh, appear. You know, might give you a black and white view, kind of a uh, pencil drawing, uh, you know, kind of an out of focus type view. Uh, but however, on this case, um, you know, these are all very interesting, but really for our purposes of this one, we're not going to add any artistic effects uh, to our presentation. So. Uh, to remove this without adding any artistic effects, we can just move our mouse pointer back to the presentation and click on a blank area of the PowerPoint um, on there. 
Now, in step eight, it tells us that we want to drag the picture to the center of the blank area of the slide. So we're gonna click on this right here, and it tells us that we wanna click this, and we want to drag this over to the center of the blank area. So we're just kinda dragging this and making this um, line up just a little bit more in between this area here. Once we do that, we're going to click on a blank area of the slide, and that's going to deselect the image. Once this looks good, just kind of eyeball it there and take a look there. Once it looks good, then you can go ahead and save your changes. And then take a look on page PowerPoint 53, where it talks to us a little bit about saving slides as graphics. Now, you can save PowerPoint slides as graphics and later use them in other presentations, in graphics programs, and on web pages. You display the slide you want to save, and then you can click the File tab, and then click the Save As. Then you can select the location where you want to save the file. In the Save As dialog box, you would click the Save As Type list arrow and select the desired graphics format, then name the file. Now the graphics format choices include the GIF, or the GIF, which stands for Graphics Interchange Format, the JPEG file, and which is the JPEG Interchange Format, the PNG, which is the Portable Network Graphics Format, the TIFF, which is the Tag Image File Format, and then you have the uh, Device Independent Bitmap, which is the BMP. And of course, then you can click on Save, and then click the desired option when the alert box appears asking if you want to save all the slides or only the current slide. So you can actually just save those slides just as an image. And that concludes the information that's on pages PowerPoint 52 and 53 where we inserted and styled a picture. On the next video, we're gonna be inserting a text box.